wow 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 As many of you probably are aware by now, in the biggest, well, I didn't see that one coming, marketing move of the decade, Bud Light. Real man of yes, the yeehaw, Marlboro Red smoking, dip spitting, denim wearing, mullet head, good old boy Bud Light. Did an endorsement deal with Dylan Mulvaney, a self-identified trans woman who has recently become the global face of the trans inclusivity movement. They even made a custom can with Dylan's face on. This month I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money too. Love ya, cheers. Now, as you can imagine, this has caused no controversy and the Bud Light marketing campaign was a smashing success. <laughs> Honestly, though, I don't know what's more egregious here. Dylan trying to make us believe they would ever drink a Bud Light for less than 50K, or the Bud Light marketing team being so out of touch with their target audience, they thought this was going to help grab additional market share. Now, for a bit of additional context for anyone not terminally online like myself, Dylan is a biological man that spent many years identifying as non-binary until the last year or two when they would come out as a trans woman and begin their TikTok mini-series documenting their daily life of girlhood. Now with over 10 million TikTok followers, Dylan recently crossed day 365 of girlhood in this series that has seen them get invited to the White House and frequently rub elbows with Hollywood elites. It's rumored that Dylan now makes over $100,000 per month in endorsements and is represented by one of Hollywood's biggest agencies, which has led to their partnerships with some massive brands like Nike and Bud Light in this case. And if I'm being honest, I don't usually care to talk about this kind of thing because inevitably the comments are going to be a war zone and I like to live peacefully. But the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light crossover and the ensuing uproar just struck me as kind of hilarious. <laughs> like what a perfect way to alienate the majority of your already declining customer base that still inexplicably drinks your overpriced piss to appeal to a demographic that wouldn't drink your beer with a gun to their head. Honestly, if you can find me someone mildly progressive or under 30 that drinks Bud Light unironically, I'll do 100 push-ups in a tub filled with piranhas. Hey. Dylan has become a walking brand endorsement from the videos I've seen, and I'm certainly not knocking him for securing that Bud Light bag. Sponsors are how I make a living after all, so I can always appreciate the hustle. It just would have made more sense if it was something at least like, a little more believable like tampons. And just to prove it, here are all the tampons I have left. Uh, oh, and people got really upset about the prospect of me doing a tampon partnership. I mean, it made the news. I mean, talk about relatable. I also eat too much spicy food and just one extra absorbent radiant tampax inserted directly into my cavern of sorrows keeps my brief skid mark free for up to 24 hours. What's that? It's wing night with the fellas? I'll take two, please. And since we're talking about sponsors, it would be rude of me not to have one of my own. <laughs> so join me as we dive a bit deeper after this message from my clone that lives outside. Spring has finally sprung, so I'm pumped to get back outside where my Raycon wireless earbuds are always just one pocket reach away. So whether I'm doing some work on my son's miniature picnic table, crushing a body weight workout on his playset, or sitting by the fire pit on a call with my dear old mother, I have a reliable pair of earbuds to deliver quality audio in every situation. You see, Raycon has made it their mission to prove you don't need to pay exorbitant prices for quality sound and smart tech features. And at half the price of other premium audio brands, you can keep a pair in your house and one pair in your car and still spend less than you would if you had gone elsewhere. The call quality is crystal clear. And with three customizable sound profiles, you can switch to something more bass heavy at the touch of a button to try and pump yourself through that end of your workout where you're doing burpees. <laughs> Did I mention that their custom gel tips are the best I've ever used? I could literally skydive into a volcano and these things would stay in place. And just one long press of the intuitive ear tap function lets me change profiles at will. With over 50,000 five-star reviews and a free return policy, there's no reason not to try some out for yourself. And right now you can get 15% off your Raycon order by clicking the link in my description box below or going to buyraycon.com slash Leon Lush. Thank you guys so much for listening and thank you Raycon for supporting the YouTubers that we love. I appreciate you.
Now, to no one's surprise, there was a huge outcry from conservative pundits and regular culture war connoisseurs online, with calls for boycotting and the usual social media trope of destroying the product of a brand that did something you don't like. Which I always thought was kind of corny, but Kid Rock clearly didn't feel the same because he immediately filmed himself blasting his Bud Light reserves with an MP5. Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. It is so hard for me as a grown man to see another grown man in so much pain as he grieves the loss of his favorite canned piss, especially someone who is responsible for bringing into this world a once in a lifetime piece of sonic art like Bawa Taba. You listen to that song on drugs and tell me God doesn't exist. You can't. Checkmate, atheist. Initially, there was some disbelief about whether the can was real or not. Without a public statement from Bud Light execs, maybe this was all just a stunt by Dylan to go viral. Well, not so much, as shortly after, Bud Light's VP of Marketing was clipped saying this in an interview. Well, I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. It is still the number one brew in the U.S. by market share, if I'm not mistaken, but I digress. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like, mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate, evolve and elevate this baby. incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what does what do what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the <sighs> tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Little buzzword salad and representation there. is it sort of the heart <laughs> of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor and out of touch humor. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought that Tampax joke was kind of funny. Come on. Come on. I'll take two. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Lord almighty. I need to find someone who loves me as much as I love my own jokes. It was really important that we had another approach. Another approach indeed, young Padwan. Anyway, so now the VP of marketing, a woman in an executive position, doubles down and starts throwing around words like inclusivity and calling Bud Light drinkers fratty and out of touch. And that just became fuel on the fire for the already butthurt demographic. Now, when I see stuff like this, uh, I spend too much time on Twitter. You know, I typically just smile and laugh because the world is, it's a funny place. It's a remarkable place. And I don't Personally care what happens with Bud Light. In my opinion, the only time it's appropriate to drink Bud Light is if you're already pissed drunk, your taste buds are torched and you just need something to sip on so you can still fit in without actually getting more drunk. But this beer apparently means a lot to some people. And this woman is being treated like she conspired to bring back prohibition. <laughs> She's got paparazzi following her, people taking pictures of her at the park, articles about how she has the audacity to laugh and smile despite the backlash the company is facing. Additionally, the executives of Anheuser-Busch, which is the parent company of Bud Light, threw her under the bus and said they had no knowledge that she was planning to take this direction. Who knows what will come out of this? She'll be just fine, I'm sure, chilling in her seven and a half million dollar Manhattan mansion while things cool off a bit though. Me buying beer at the store. Excuse me, clerk, which of these fine beers is the most inclusive and racially diverse? Doesn't matter if it tastes like shit, I prefer my beer with a lot of flavor representation. As you can imagine, the comments on some of the various pieces of media we're watching today are absolutely wild. Naturally, all of the political pundits online have been absolutely gobbling this shit up like a shark that smells blood in the water. If they get a hint of something they know their base is going to hate, it's time to make that bread, baby. It's the oldest script in the book. You hate something? Well, I hate it too, so that makes us friends. Now buy my shit. This particular video popped up in my feed the other day and it made me laugh out loud. America's been drinking beer from a company that doesn't even know which restroom to use. That's why I created Conservative Dad's Ultra Right 100% Woke Free Beer. Now surely I thought this was a parody account, but in fact, you can buy a six pack of Conservative Dad's Ultra Right 100% Woke Free Beer for, let me check my notes again, uh, almost $35 after shipping? 
Does the beer come with a hand that pulls my root while I drink it? What the fuck? Stop giving money to woke corporations that hate our values. You like overpriced canned piss? Well, you're gonna love my overpriced canned piss that costs twice as much, but it's not woke. I mean, grifters are gonna grift, but this shit's getting out of hand. I like money too, but I just don't really care what you love or hate. I just try to make things funny enough to watch so I can monetize your view. Another thing I found interesting was all the pundits celebrating this victory lap that Anheuser-Busch lost six billion in market cap. Ooh, you go woke, you go broke. All these different headlines popping up. Bud Light will never recover. They've destroyed their brand. Okay, listen, I spend a lot of time looking at stock charts, so let's take a peek. So the Anheuser-Busch market cap had a pretty nice run recently from 122 billion up to 134-ish. And then since this Bud Light controversy, it looks like it took a, a pretty decent little dip down here back into the 120s, mid 120s. But let's zoom out to, you know, three years. An almost indistinguishable dip, not even close to as big as some ones that happened previously because it's almost like markets go up and down sometimes based on other outside economic factors. Kid Rock shoots Bud Light with MP5. Market cap goes to zero. Honestly, that's probably how I should title this video. Hello, editing Leon here. Uh, since I recorded this yesterday, the CEO of Anheuser-Busch dropped a statement, fat statement drop, uh, kind of long where he says a bunch of stuff without really saying anything. I'll put that on screen here if you want to pause and read that, but otherwise, the saga continues. In this age of all attention is good attention, I'm curious to see how this goes and if this increase in brand visibility, which has obviously happened this last two weeks, uh, though perceived negative by many, might actually help Bud Light in the long run. Because we have to remember how short the collective memory of the internet is. Tomorrow, there will be a new scandal and something else to be pissed at. Sensational headlines will be written and everyone will quote tweet each other and start dunking on each other on Twitter, trying to sell you something if your ideology is aligned. Then all of a sudden, June rolls around and we find out Bud Light is the official beer pride month. I'm just saying, crazier things have happened. Budweiser presents Real LGBTQIA Plus of Genius. Real LGBTQIA Plus of Genius. Today, we salute you, Mr. Or Mrs. Or Miss or Non-Binary. Pro Wrestling Wardrobe Designer. Pro Wrestling Wardrobe Designer. Please subscribe. Hey.